channel for a, another look at the C64 Mini guys. This is the fantastic plug and play machine that has been released in two versions guys. The version I have is the Mini with the non-working keyboard. I mean it still looks like a bloody stunner but they don't work. Now of course there is a full size C4 um, with a working keyboard that is fantastic as well i haven't got around to picking one of them up yet because i own this one um but i probably will guys i'm terrible i've got to have it all haven't i um it's a fantastic package guys we have looked at it before i did an unboxing and everything but you know i thought we'd get back onto the train and uh, have another look at this fantastic fantastic plugin the purpose of this video guys is literally going to be to show you what games are on here obviously you get 64 games guys um yeah to look what's on there they have uh for each each game you have a, a couple of stills uh showing you or a few stills showing you what the game is like some information about the game and uh, you know about the developers and so on uh, we'll look at all 64 guys and then what we're going to do is i'll make a second video uh, where we're going to do six games off it i will pick three three of my favorites and then i would like you guys to comment in the comment section and tell me what other three to play uh, the ones that are the most popular i will play three of them and then so in that way you've chosen three and i've chosen three and it should be a fantastic video guys so yeah that's what we're going to do that is the purpose of re-looking at this beautiful beautiful little plug-in and play now of course i've said this many times before it is called the c64 for a very good reason yes they weren't allowed to use the commodore name so they literally just had to call it the C64 but I tell you what we've been looking at the uh, Spectrum Vega of course haven't we and this is a nice comparison isn't it what is this package like now the Spectrum Vega pack uh, the OS on it for instance is quite basic and what have you not really a lot to it and um, it's basically just a load of menus to get to the games fantastic fantastic machine don't get me wrong but this one this baby is done slightly different as you're going to see in a moment there is a lot of meat on this bones and it is fantastic i love it so much so will you join me as we take a look once again at the c64 mini guys now watch carefully because you're going to be choosing three games to be played in the second part of this video and I'll be choosing the other three so comment away guys choose which games you would like me to cover see you in a minute well guys here we go with our uh, <laughs> re-look if you like at the C64 Mini obviously as I mentioned earlier they weren't allowed to call it the Commodore 64 Mini but I tell you what it's a fantastic package nevertheless 64 games on the C64 Hmm, no surprise there, right? Really. That's 64 games. Uh, yeah, out of the two, this is the only one I have, guys. I have the first version, the small one, the mini, with the non-working keyboard. You can, of course, get the big one with the working keyboard. I haven't bought that yet because of owning this one. It seems a bit silly to have both, but you know what I'm like? I'll probably have to get it in the end when it comes down in price a little bit. So anyway... We've looked at this before, of course, but I thought we'd take a little bit more time and I'll show you some of these bits and bobs that are going on here. As you hit each game, it gives you a little bit of a, of a look at them there. 
and the stills and what have you and a little bit of history so obviously here we have Ali Cat and it tells you the author it tells you the composer and the genre so obviously it's a shoot em up from 1986 uh, author is Andrew Braybrook uh, composer is Steve Turner so yeah it shows you obviously a little bit about the game as well it's the Alley Cat Racing season can you become the champion so you get the drift of it anyway it gives you a little bit of information about the game as well which is fantastic it tells you what you're going to be in for doesn't it right we'll move on to the next one So you can see another fantastic title there. Uh, the thing is with the C64, it's a bit like when we do the Spectrum videos, isn't it? For some people, they're just not going to have aged well. In my opinion, they aged pretty well. I don't mind them at all. And there's still a lot of bloody fun to be had with the C64 games. So there we have an okay. Again, you can see all the little images there, guys. Obviously, again, author, composer, and genre, because it's a puzzle game, of course. Right, on to the next one. I shall let you just have a look this time. Obviously, you can read it for yourself. You don't need me to read it for you, do you? I love the music on this, uh, on the menu here, it's fantastic. This of course is a doozy of a game here guys, I mean this, this is fantastic. Um, it's a schmop, of course. We're going to come back to that one and have a quick play on it. Right, here we go, next one. Again, oh, these types of games, I love them, where you go and, you know, find your key and get to the next bit and kill the enemies along the way. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, well, there we go. There's the basic thing, because you can actually proper do basic on here, guys. This is the thing with this little machine. It's fantastic that you've even got the basic program here. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I love it that they did this, that they didn't just stick to games, guys. This is fantastic. <laughs> and Battle Valley. Again, a shooter, guys. Boulder Dash, oh the classic Boulder Dash, oh what a franchise and a half that one is. Get all the information there guys, it even gives you uh, the www.boulderdash.com website link. Bounder. Hmm. Control a tennis ball. And again, guys. These are fantastic ideas. They're just fantastic. They really, really are. And you can imagine back in the day when you had a Commodore 64 in your room. You must have been in seventh heaven. And as I said with the uh, Spectrum videos, you know we used to have one person in our group of friends. You know, every now and then we would take turns and buying a game, and then we'd all copy it. And it was no different with us with the uh, with the Commodore 64 guys. We used to do that as well, and there was an endless amount of games. It was fantastic. 
There we go. Oh, of course, this is a game I love on the Atari Lynx. Fantastic game. California games, guys. What a, what a classic. Next. Chips Challenge again, guys. My Probably my all-time favourite game ever on the Lynx. And it was fantastic on here as well. What a fantastic inclusion here. Brilliant. I tell you what, they've got some stellar titles here, guys. This is where it varies um, very much to the uh, to the uh, Spectrum uh, Vega, guys, because they didn't have all the big names on the Vega. On here, they have they got all the big names from the big publishers. They managed to get their hands on them. Next. Confuse on. <laughs> okay, it's a puzzler, guys. Yeah, look at that. Brilliant. <laughs> Very simple puzzler, but... Oh. Cosmic Causeway. There's another absolutely stunning title back in the day. I remember playing this back in the day and it was just awesome. It really, really was. Considered a puzzler again. Then we have Creatures. This is another one. Oh, I remember wasting many hours on this. It was, uh, again, fantastic game. Obviously, it's uh, considered a platformer. But I love the way they tell you, you know, exactly what you've got to do on this game. Destroy the demons and rescue your fellow fuzzies. What could be simpler? Shoot enemies, collect as many magic portion, uh, portion creatures as you can on the enemies that flash white when hit can be vanquished. When you complete each stage, enter the witch's hut. She has NPCs to mix portions that give you extra weapons. I mean, fantastic. Next we have... We have a platformer again, guys. I mean, this is one that I remember playing back in the day. Um, it was a doozy. I remember that. It was a shooter, but again, fantastic way of doing it. You know, I love my shooters at the best of times. And they have a self-destructive mechanism to get more time. Now, Cybernoid, that's an interesting title, that one. That is, again, you know, a bit of an unsung hero, really. You don't hear people talk about it very often. It was a fantastic shooting up. Shoot pirate ships and collect their stolen generation of cargo. Look at the, I mean, look at the graphics, guys. They're, they're fantastic. They really are. Cybernoid 2. The space pirates are at it again, guys. But look at that. Just, just look at those stills, guys. They're fantastic. You know, I've always thought that a lot of these uh, graphics on these uh, games are very, very close, aren't they, really? To something you'd see on the PC engine. Um, I know some of you in the comments is going to kill me for that one, but um, I do, I really do believe that quite strongly. I think they're fantastic looking games. Here we go, another puzzler, guys. Deflector. Again, look at it, doesn't it look fantastic? It really does. Looks absolutely stunning. Right, next up. Everyone's a Wally. 
Now, of course, some of the games are earlier ones, like this one from 1985, and the graphics on them aren't as stellar as some of the previous games I've just shown, but this... <coughs> pardon me, they're still fun, guys. Really, really fun. Fire Lord. Again, more basic graphics again. See, this one's another platformer, guys. Very, very basic graphics. This is where, if you're stepping out of the realms of what I said about the PC engine, these are very, very basic ones. Still bloody fun. Hawkeye. Hmm, plays this huh, synthetic life form called Hawkeye. I mean, look again, guys. Look at, the, look at it. Oh, stunning looking. Really are. This is another platformer. Yeah, lovely graphics on that one again. The robotics. This is a maze game, this one. Oh, look at that. Highway Encounter. Stop the alien to invade the earth. It's a shooting one. You see the ages of this, some of these games, guys, in the 86, 85. <coughs> They've got some age to them, they really, really have. But there's a, something for everybody on this little unit. It really is a stunner. Hunter's Moon, shoot him up again. Oh man. Fantastic, look at that. Hysteria. Another shoot him up, guys. Looks a bit like a wrestler there, doesn't it, from the 80s. Impossible Mission. Very, very famous one, that one. Thin platformer. Very basic looking one for this from 1983, of course. I was 13 when this game came. This game came out. An incredible age to this game. And it's still considered a doozy. Possible mission too. Might as well keep up the trend, don't they? Again, fantastic. Ten. That's very simple, isn't it? Very simple. A bloody fantastic shoot 'em up. Oh, it really, really is fantastic. Test your skills against diabolical, diabolical, sorry, alien beings and spacecraft. Oh, fantastic game. Jumpman. <laughs> 1983, guys, again, look at the graphics. I mean, this is what I mean, guys, when you look at the graphics of Jumpman, but then go back. Look, look at the difference, and this is on... This is on the same microcomputer, guys. They, oh, it just lived on and on. It got better and better as time went on. Yeah, back to Jumpman. <laughs> Brilliant. And we have Mega Apocalypse. Again, look at the graphics on this one. 
another shoot em up. I can see a bit of an ongoing theme here. There was a lot of shoot em ups on the Commodore because they worked so bloody well on it, they really did. With this fantastic joystick, you know, what, I mean, it's just made for it, isn't it? Made for it. Made for shoot em ups, guys. Fantastic thing. Mission AD. That's a slightly earlier one again, 86. Another platformer. But still, you know, it looks pretty terrific to me. Monty Mole. It's another classic, guys. Who didn't love Monty back in the time? Wow. Very classic platform on that one. Monty on the run. Yeah, fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> Look at his little jumpsuit. Too. Oh, so 80s, isn't it? Eh? See what I mean about all the big franchises being here from the time, you know? Brilliant, brilliant package, it really is. Nebulous, wow, another fantastic game. I love the way they have all the uh, the cover art at the bottom as well as you scroll along, and it really is quite an awesome little package. This they did such a bloody good job, they really did. Netherworld. Of course, as I said, we're going to play on some more games, um, but not in this video. This video is literally just to show you what they show you, basically, when you turn the machine on, and what information they give you, and so on. That will uh, come in a second video, guys, where I will play on some of my favourites on here. The Netherworld, uh, another shoot em up, guys. Absolutely stunner. Oh, look at it. Wow. Nobby the Aardvark. So this is one that you either love or hate. Um, it's quite a difficult one to control, and I know it puts a lot of people off, but I tell you what, if you give it a bit of time and a bit of practice, it can be an awesome, awesome platformer, guys. Another Nudes, how do you pronounce that one? I can't really remember. Nudes of Yesod. Something like that anyway, isn't it? It's a platformer again, guys. See the graphics on it, uh, shit, they're lovely, aren't they? Paranoid. Another shoot them up, but look how basic that one looks. Just look at it. Blimey. <laughs> clear all, sorry, clear each space fighter. Of rob robots, freighter even clear each space freighter. Seriously, yeah, brilliant. Pit stop two. Yeah, I mean, oh, I love racing games. I love them. Uh, some of the early ones haven't. Uh, you know, survived time very well, um, but that's actually quite a little doozy, this one. It's uh, still fun to play. Ranorama. Uh, yeah. Another shoot em up, guys. Very interesting um, physics to it, I suppose. Robin of the Wood. They're not uh, having a, a uh, yeah, little bit of a uh, 
pop out uh, Robin of Sherwood, aren't they? Um, obviously, from 1985, uh, during that time, you had a program on in the UK, and uh, it was extremely popular. Uh, so it was no wonder that a uh, Robin Hood game made its way to here. It really, really wasn't. Yeah, brilliant. Made this game. But you're actually Robin Hood. Trying to make your way through Sherwood Forest. And the Sheriff of Nottingham on your arse. Rubicon, uh, again guys, fantastic game. This is a later one as well, this is from 1991 guys, so you can see the difference in the graphics again. How awesome does that look? Of course it's a shooting one, wow. Brilliant. We have Skate. Crazy. Compete in a skating contest. So I guess a sports title, well it's considered a sports title. Yeah, quite an interesting one that one. It's, uh, yeah, it's not, not Tony Hawk's by any stretch of the imagination, but it's quite fun. School days, now back in the time. Oh, I love this game so much. It was fantastic and one of my favourites on the, on the machine. You must get your school report out of the staff. Rumours safe. Yeah, because you're a naughty boy. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic game. And I'm so pleased it's included here. What I like on the cover down there, you can see the cover, is that uh, they look like Beano characters. They really, really do. They look like something from Dennis the Menace or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Snare. Again, a puzzler, guys. You know, there were some stellar puzzler games on the, on the C64. There really was some absolutely fantastic ones. A speedball. Another terrific game. Used to waste many hours playing this. Again, looks absolutely fantastic. Speedball 2. Much more of the same, really. Spin Dizzy. This is a, almost like a Marble Madness type game. Hmm. Back in the day, that, that was stunning to see this. Uh, yeah, the 3D environment was, was brilliant. Star Pause. Play as Captain and Rubber Paw Strong. <laughs> Love that image as well, love it. Now, is there any games you would like me to play, guys? I mean, obviously I'm showing you the whole 64 games here. Um, how about, you know, I do six games in the next video. Three of my own choice and three that you choose, guys. How about you comment below and tell me which ones to play? And you know what? I will do that for you. I will show you them and play them very badly, probably, but I will do it for you. I think that's a good, a good way to go with the second video, guys. Three from us, from my own choice, and three that you guys have asked me to play. The most popular ones. They're the ones I shall do. Now we have steel. Again, uh, look. Oh, the, the, the graphics on this are awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Shoot them up again. Then we have street sports and baseball. Now, I love myself a baseball game if they're done right, guys. This one, mm, it's alright. 
It's not too bad. I've played a hell of a lot worse. Summer games. Two. Yeah, it can be quite fun. Uh, for me, a lot of sports games just get a bit tedious in the end. Uh, I think it's I feel a bit the same with this. Certain bits are better than others. Like the bits with the, you know, the bike race is uh, quite fun. And but yeah, the fencing one, not so much. So, uh, super cycle. See so again, I love a racing game if it's done right. And that is a little stunner that one. This, this, this is another one guys, this is an adventure game, and, but again, very, very fun at the time. Not showing you too much, not giving too much away there on the still. Of course, you could choose this one if you want me to play this one. The Temple of Asphia Trilogy, something like that anyway, isn't it? The Ark of Yesod. Yeah, Yesod, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah. Again, guys, a platformer. Very, very fun. Once you get the, uh, you know, the controls down and whatever. Right, the C64 Hall of Fame, guys. Um, yeah, a massive thanks to all of those who influenced or backed the C64. Um, of course, it was it was a crowdfunded uh, thing and and a very 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 popular one. I mean, it spawned a sequel, didn't it? In the full version, the uh, this is the mini, and of course, it was so popular that they had enough money in the coffers left to uh, to make a full version C64. So it went very very well for them. And I'm not surprised because this is a fantastic package. Yeah, this, it just tells you lots of bits and bobs. It tells you to go over to the uh, to their website, game instructions, expanded user manual, user forums, updates, and firmware upgrades. Yeah, brilliant. Love way to put your own enthusiasm has kept. C64 alive basically isn't it? Yeah. so yeah fantastic bloody little package this guys um, and I can't highly recommend it enough I really really can't it is brilliant now of course we move on to uh, some more games here guys things bounce back again a fantastic platformer look at that again Brilliant. Thing on a spring, yeah, oh, I remember this one, yeah, this is a, an early one. Uh, very basic graphics again, guys, as you can see. <laughs> oh, Trailblazer. Now you all know that I love my Gizmundo. My favourite game on the Gizmundo is Trailblazer, but what a lot of people don't realise is it started its life off here. This is where it started, guys, on the C64. Now, of course, there's a much more basic version of it, but it started its life off here, and it is still a fantastic game to play. It's not as visually stunning, obviously, as it is on the Gizmundo, but still, this is where it started. And of course, even back then, it was done by Sean Southern. So oh, fantastic. Yeah, I was so stoked when I saw this on here. I really, really was, because it gave me a chance to play in the roots. If you know, back to the roots of Trailblazer. I like the way they put a football on the uh, front row. That's a bit odd. It's hardly a football, is it? Yushimata. Yeah, not not really my types of games really, uh, usually. Yeah, I don't don't I find them quite boring really in the end. I mean this one might be a doozy, I can't remember ever playing it to be fair. Yeah. 
Yeah, so another one here, another shoot them up. Uh, yeah, quite an early one, quite basic. Obviously, you find Andrew Baybrook again. But you know, you'll notice his name a lot on here. He's done such a lot of games. Who dares wins too? And again, if you like this kind of game, you'll be absolutely set with this little unit. Consider the shooting up again. Winter games. Again, it'll be a bit of a, a Marmite game. They probably like certain aspects of it and probably not so much as others. World games. Now this is a more interesting type of uh, sports title because it's uh, sports that aren't covered so much. I mean you can see like <laughs> log, log running or whatever they call it and hmm, weightlifting, you know things like that are very very unusual wants to be covered in a game. So that makes it different, that makes it more interesting. Oh here we go, this is this is my type of shooting up guys. These are the ones that I love. Some of the ones that they consider to be shooting ups on here. Yeah, not so much are they? <laughs> yeah, fantastic looking on it, eh? Yeah, there we are, back round to Alley Cat. So there you go guys, that is all 64 titles. So as I said, that is the homework for you out there. You've got to let me know which games you want to see playing and I will play them for you. So yeah, it'll be the top three that I picked that I will play for you guys. And then I'll play three of my own favorites as well. So that'll be an interesting video to do. So yeah, um, just comment below which ones you'd like to see on this fantastic little machine guys and what a doozy it is but there we go guys that's a look at the c64 the original model you let me know what you want me to do which games would you like me to look at and i hope you enjoyed this look at it obviously there was no actual gameplay it was just uh, stills and information and music fantastic music guys with that guys, I'm going to say off with his name, tschüss, and goodbye guys, and I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.